Hey there, everybody. Welcome to a live recording of the Stacky Benjamin Show. I'm Joe Salci. Hi, and I have a band of characters with me. OG is here. Paula Pant is here. We got uh, Mr. Penzo is here. Hola. <laughs> and, 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 and <laughs> it's, it's a hard. Bienvenue. Hola. And, and uh, we're about to record an episode of the Stacky Benjamin Show. Uh, this is going to be live next Friday. So you can be a part of the show by being in the chat here with us. If you'd like to say hello, we've already got Karen, our, uh, our producer, saying hello. Just to kick things off, we're going to be talking about etiquette because OG demanded it that we discuss this topic today. He was all about it and <laughs> said, uh, we have to have a piece that's from what publication did you get this from? MyRecipes.com. So, had, had to had to do it. So by popular request, we're doing this. Hey, David, how are you, man? All right, uh, uh, we're going to do the show in the normal order, but there will be a couple breaks on YouTube. If you're watching this later, you're going to see the show uh without music number one uh at the beginning and at the end and then number two uh also uh with some of the the uh not edits still in there if you want to hear a much cleaner version you want to go to our audio channel uh, wherever you listen to podcasts and listen to stacky benjamins there okay you guys ready to do this doug let's uh the dirty dirty version not the clean version <laughs> the naughty version right all right, <laughs> all right. Here we go. Live from the YouTube machine, it's the Stacking Benjamin Show. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug, and are you eating escargot right now? Well, I hope to God your napkin is in your lap with the crease toward you. We're talking about etiquette today, so while Joe is shoving Cheez-Its in his pie hole like a toddler, the rest of us are trying to refine ourselves. Today, to help us class it up in here, we welcome the woman who makes the rest of us look like barbarians from Afford Anything, Paula Pant. And here with us today, we also welcome the man who taught etiquette to the Queen of England from LenPenzo.com, Ozzy Osbourne. <laughs> it's just Len Penzo, and no table setting would be complete without a man who will delight you with his curtsy and steal your heart with his style and panache. It's OG. And since today is Barry Manilow's birthday, you better bet I'm going to be back with some Barry Manilow trivia. And now, a guy who knows to always use the fork that he just licked clean, it's Joe Salci. Hi. Hey, everybody. Happy Friday to you. I am Joe Salci. Hi. Average Joe Money on Twitter. And Doug, just before we start, it's Escargo. Escargo. No, okay. But that's ridiculous. Look, you're, you're right twice a day, but this ain't one of those times, Joe. There's a T at the end of that word. It's right there. Why it would is. they put it there if you're not supposed to pronounce it? It is very good point. However, in this case, it is yeah. escargot. But we're not here to debate that. We're here to talk etiquette. We're going to talk about money etiquette and maybe even how good etiquette might be able to land you a better job, maybe able to help you more money, or does it? Does it really matter as much as we think that it does? And here across the card table from me, the gentleman who is all about the etiquette on a Friday, the etiquette of making sure you leave by 5 p.m., duh, it's Mr. OG. How are you, man? Oh, well, we blew that one, didn't we? Because well, it's past 5 p.m. on a Friday? Just It's just about, yeah. Well, the good news is you're on. You're going to be on time and a half uh, on this one, which is good, right? I'll trade that for my Friday night, thanks. <laughs> Deal. And the person where it's Friday night, no matter what party she's at, it's Miss Paula Pant is here with us. How are you? I am great. You know, with the right attitude, it is Friday night, 24-7, 365. It, fantastically. What's that thing? You know, I, I actually hate this phrase, Paul, the one that says that you never work a day in your life if you love your job. Like, doesn't that kind yeah. of make you want to? Yeah. Well, I, th I think it's a bunch of baloney. It's, uh, you know, it's, this is something you and I have talked about before. Your life is a picture, but each day is a pixel. And any one given pixel is not necessarily that interesting. So no matter what you're doing, I mean, you could have the best job in the world, but, uh, you know, 
sometimes sometimes you're just a pixel like every hour every day is just a pixel of it or to stay with our analogy it is a party as you mentioned earlier but it might be a bad party or just an okay party not the world's best party right right or it might be that lag time in the party where like you, you know everyone's talking to everybody else and you're kind of awkwardly standing around and you know so not every moment at a party is great like doug does uh during shows just awkwardly sits there while we're we're hanging out doing intros uh <laughs> mr len pedzo is here deep under los angeles how are you my friend uh, I'm doing great. I'm I'm afraid now that we're doing this uh, YouTube thing, everybody can actually see inside my bunker. And if, uh, yeah. if I'm not careful, they can probably see that the bunker has windows. So let's is that, is that why you zoomed in so close and put your face <laughs> so close yeah. to the, the uh, puts, camera? Puts that chair right up next like, to it. Is your head really that big or <laughs> is that just uh, the camera adding 15 pounds? <laughs> Such a fun Thank day. You. By the way, if, if you want wow. to come hang out with us while I make these shows, we are making them just for the summer. Going to have a summer of fun. So join us on Mondays. It's always fun talking about Friday on a Monday here. But join us on YouTube at the Stacky Benjamins page. Generally, it's uh, 5 p.m. Eastern. We're a little late today because I, uh, I had to get to my current uh, location. But we got everybody here in this location. We got OG here. We got Doug. We got Paula. We got Len. So that's good. So let's get this party started. But first, now we can get this party started. Today's piece comes to us from the very hard-hitting website, MyRecipes.com. It's where Paula Pant goes for all of her hard-hitting finance topics. Isn't this like <laughs> the secret to afford anything is MyRecipes.com? Uh, you know, actually, I, I do have to say, I own the domain NepaleseRecipes.com, so I'm a little disappointed that you didn't choose that one. That being said, I only own the domain. I haven't actually developed it out, so it's literally just a blank domain right now. That's what I was going to ask. How many uh, drunken domain bit buying parties have you had, Paula? <laughs> Quite a few. Uh, I also own GoThugs.com, which, depending on how you read it, could spell Got Hugs. God. <laughs> it's an either or website or it could be both it's like when i tried to get it. the og on twitter and i kept on searching for it and it just came up with a guy named theo g <laughs> it's, you know that doesn't rick edelman has that has that same thing with his website right he always advertises it's he goes rick edelman.com or rice delman.com rice delman yeah because <laughs> he spells rick like a Nincompoop. Yeah, he forgot the he forgot the K. Or his parents did anyway. <laughs> All uh, Ricks enough. that spell your name with R I C send your hate mail to OG at stackybenjamins.com. Hey Paula, you haven't taken Paula you Paula, you haven't taken the the persistent Nepalese itch yet have oh, you oh i have not no okay. that one well, is that's... still up for grabs i was gonna say all people who also use the word nincompoop on a regular basis send your mail well it's on <laughs> this is this is family friendly <laughs> i've that was the pg version i can kick it up a notch if y'all want nincompoop those knuckleheads i don't know if you guys mind or not but we're gonna get to the piece because it's called Can't 11, <laughs> 11... <laughs> We've I'm tried, on this tried to all delay day. for as long as possible. All day, I've been thinking. <laughs> yes! 11 fine dining etiquette rules you've probably broken <laughs> your whole life. And it was interesting. When I'm flipping around and I'm looking for things to talk about and I saw this piece, I thought, of course, what are these rules? What are the etiquette rules that I've never seen that maybe I have, have broken? And Len, we'll start with you. I don't know. It's, you were going through these. Did you know any of these existed? I, did, I think I knew of 11. I think I knew of three of them. <laughs> That's actually more, I think, than I knew. Uh, uh, the yeah. only one I was kind of aware of was the flip the oyster over when you were done with it. But uh, that's about it. I did not even know that one. Paula, did you shell. know that one? Uh, no, I did not know that one. How about the, the, and just to give people an idea of what these are, because we're not going to spend a lot of time on it, but number one, never lift your menu off the table. OG, have you heard of that one? Yes, I know that. You do know that. Really? Now, where do you, where do you learn that from? Where did you get that from? Uh, I don't, I don't remember. Honestly, there's a book called Emily Post's Guide to Etiquette. Um, I, I've, it's a small read. I've uh, studied it. Well, it's a, did you, did I mean, you say 
Yes. Well, well, and it is funny because because just to tell people what's going on here, OG said ahead of time, he's, he's like, what does that have to do with money? And uh, as we were discussing the fact we were going to talk about this piece, I got to tell you guys that when I was at a dinner as, uh, as we were going around the country deciding where we were going to live next, Cheryl, for her profession, as part of the interview process, we had to go to dinners at, at each of these places with the other people she was going to work with. And I have to tell you, knowing a little bit about etiquette, really, really helped because of the fact that, that I knew that that was the only part of the interview they were going to have with me, right? They were putting us with these other people she was going to work with to see, to see exactly if uh, she was a fit. So I'm wondering, Paula, if knowing something about etiquette actually can make you a bunch more money, like it might at least saved a job for my spouse. I, I think if you know the same basics that everybody else knows, like Put your napkin in your lap. Uh, use the silverware from the outside, um, moving inside. You know that sort of thing. Sure, like if if that if they're the standard basics that most people know, then you'll be most likely judged on it because that's what everybody else is doing. And so, really, what you're being judged on is um, your ability to mirror the subtleties of what your fellow peers at the table are doing. But if it's something really obscure then nobody else is going to know it. And so it I don't see how that could necessarily help you. Though the menu thing, for example, I had no, I mean, it would never occur to me that a person was being etiqueted, etiquetous, etiquette, polite, um, if they refused to or if they declined to pull their menu off the table. Yeah, some of these other ones place discards on the upper left part of your plate, things you're not going to eat. Keep your bread on the plate at all times unless you're delivering it to your mouth. Fold your napkin with a crease toward you before putting it in your lap. Doug, you're all about that one. I already covered that one earlier. <laughs> yeah. I need to repeat that. So you don't fling your whatever you have in your napkin all over yes. yourself. That's right. All over. So once again, OG with the win here. Uh, uh, OG, when it comes to when it comes to etiquette, Paul is talking about table etiquette. What about I think there's also some etiquette in conversations, though, isn't there kind of a back and forth? Oh, that's a very, very. You're asking the wrong guy about <laughs> like that. that <laughs> day. Well, you know, I was just going to add to what Paula said. I think, you know, at some at some point you've got like the base level of stuff, right? You, you know, don't slurp your soup or whatever you know or take it yeah nice just for the sound effect <laughs> yeah don't do that the microphone etiquette just yeah, what we don't, need right? don't do that Brat. you know that sort of thing but but is, isn't there sometimes where kind of like attracts like a little bit right where you know if you notice somebody that has let's say maybe example for example you have a nice um uh you, you, you like nice jewelry or you have a nice watch or something like that. And somebody else is wearing a nice watch. Wouldn't you also kind of sort of notice that maybe and say like, Oh, I noticed that you have the, you know, thing. And if you're Actually, using your example, Joe, about going out for a job interview or kind of that next level job interview, I mean, you're not going to necessarily say, well, now remember, don't uh, lift your menu. But if you are aware of that and you see that the other person also is aware of that, wouldn't you be like, okay, they pay attention to details. Yeah. And the only way you're going to be aware of that is if you know those things, uh, uh, Len, for your job working for the man, I mean, how much have you had to study etiquette or pay attention to etiquette working, you know, when you, but you you've had to talk in front of generals in a pair of jeans, right? That, that is true. Yes. That's a true story. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, in, is this in terms of conversation or any etiquette in, in, you know, I'm just talking about any etiquette, which is like, don't show up to it, talk to a general in a pair of jeans. I mean, you knew that well, one ahead of time. So it, it, yes. it, it, it actually made it so that you were able to kind of laugh it off because you knew just how bad that was going to be. And I think you mentioned before when you told the story, it actually went well, partly because you were able to deflect. Yeah, it did go well. And the first thing I did was, well, I, was I addressed the problem. And what uh, Joe was referring to is this was actually a time I was supposed to meet you, Joe, out in Texarkana, if you remember. That's I was right. flying into uh, Shreveport uh, on a business trip, and my luggage, I made it, but my luggage didn't. And so, and I had a meeting at that at that time, you know, right after I got off the plane, and um, unfortunately, not right after, but uh, several hours after, but the luggage never made it, and I was stuck uh, having to brief uh, in what I 
flew in, which I never did again. I always made sure if I was briefing uh, on the day I was traveling, I'd wear my <laughs> I'd wear my suit <laughs> traveling. So, anyways, but yes, it deflected because I addressed the issue um, and uh, it it lightened the load and it took a lot of pressure off right out right out of the gate. So. Uh, that, that, well, that's, that's what I was going to, that's what I was going to ask, Len, we'll stick with you. If you're not sure what the etiquette is in a situation, how do you handle that? I think you're on, you'd be honest about it and you might want to, you know, you might want to put it on yourself and just say, Hey, you know, I'm a, the heathen here. That's uh, not very refined. I, you know, I'm not sure what the etiquette is here, so I'll do my best. And if I make any faux pas, you know, please excuse um, any faux pas I make. They're not intentional. And I apologize in advance. It's like Paula, you're Paul, you're you're big with the uh, the royal family. How many how many things do you see of those articles of like people who are like, oh my gosh, can you believe that so and who's it decided to shake the hand of this person? Or there's a big thing with Tom Cruise, and um, they did the the top one of the Top Gun premieres in London, and and uh, Kate, whatever her title is, was there Middleton, and and he like put his hand out to like help her up the stairs like a normal person would be. And she tolerated mm -hmm. it for like two steps. And then like they, she did all this fancy stuff to like basically go, no, bro, you can't touch me. Right. Against the rules. Right, right, right. Sure he didn't yes. do it on purpose. Yeah, exactly, exactly. There's all that specialized etiquette related to the royals. Like never turn your back on the queen or, um, you know, all of those. We did. Use the and word. The king. Use the word Circus lavatory 1776. instead of. That's what we said. <laughs> <laughs> always turn your back on the queen and king throw your tea in the river yes C, by the way but i think there is the i think there is some th th there is uh, uh some other ways to handle that too og how about you like how did how to deal with the fact that uh, you don't know what the rules are yeah yeah i, I I'm, I'm with len i think you the, the quicker that you go I, I don't know what to do here or if there's somebody that uh, that you can kind of lean on real quick, you know, I don't know what I'm supposed to say or I don't know what I'm supposed to do in this situation. Give me the crash course or at least tell me the top three things not to do <laughs> so I don't <laughs> totally put my uh, foot in my mouth. You know, I mean, we've all done it, uh, certainly unintentionally, I'm sure. Yeah, you know. You, yep, Doug. Well, you know, I... <sighs> There was a time when I used to, you know, take folks out to lunch, especially when I was hiring for my leadership team. I would I would always make sure I took them out to eat because it when you have people in that setting versus versus a typical interview setting, they tend to let their guard down a little bit. It's more social. It gives you something to do besides just focus on the, you know, the typical interview scenario and you see a different side of that person. And uh, I was always looking for how they handled themselves in that situation. And I hate to say it, but if I saw elbows on the table, if I saw mouth, you know, chewing with, uh, I should say if they were chewing with their mouth open or any of those kinds of, you know, more typical, easy to spot faux pas, I had to judge them on that. But when I had people, and this is all linking back to what OG and, and Len were, were talking about as far, as far as what do you do when you don't know? There were a few times I can think of when people would would say, I'm not sure what to do in this situation. And when they said that with very little confidence and they sounded scared and I don't want to make a mistake here, that never worked in their favor, in my opinion. I'm a pretty judgy guy. But when they said, I'm not really not sure what to in do. Your clothing attire that you just psh, do whatever. We're going, no. we're going back at me for that. Okay. Okay, Tug in the Technicolor dream coat. Well, go ahead. That's right. That's right. But uh, but but if they did it with confidence, if they said, "Look, I'm not really sure what to do in this situation, and I I don't mean any offense by this, but I think X, Y, and Z," or they still spoke with confidence and still conducted themselves with confidence, I never counted it against them because they still had that presence. They still had some confidence, and they were willing to allow that there may be some uh, sort of rules of the road that they weren't aware of. But it was those times when they were really like oh, i don't really know don't judge me like well, you know what i'm judging you now no jug that's really good because i i have the same standard as like when i would interview and if somebody i would always prefer somebody if they didn't know an answer they said they didn't know because there's nothing worse in business when you're relying on somebody's uh, uh expertise or or you want their opinion it's much better if they are 
secure enough in themselves to say they don't know than to to pretend they know and give an answer and that comes back to haunt you later. It's always been, I've always told uh, the people working under me, if you don't know the answer, you can say, I don't know and I'll get back to you, but don't pretend you know when you don't know, because that, that does so much more harm. Which is, which is actually interesting, uh, uh, Len, because in, in matters of just table manners and etiquette, when I was at the Citadel, we had this uh, short course called The Art of Being a Gentleman when the Citadel was an all-men's school. And we sat down with a local Miss Manners person and went through all this stuff. But at, the, but at the table and in polite company, if you did not know what to do, the example this woman gave us was, and it served me well for a long time, is if you don't know what to do, follow what Andy Warhol did. And we're all like, what the hell did Andy Warhol do? Andy Warhol would be in these high-end New York restaurants and he would would eat salad with his fingers, right? Everybody else is worried about what fork to use. He would just reach in and he's eating it with his fingers. And, and her point was, if you don't know what to do, just do it with a hell of a lot of confidence. Like if you're going to do it, do it, just do it. And maybe some people will notice, maybe they won't, but you know, if it's not going to kill you, I can see how in your job, you know, don't fake it. Just say, Hey, I'm not sure if this is the right thing or yeah. not, but I think at the, but I think at the table, if you don't know which fork to use, yeah. man, grab it and go. <laughs> Just use grab the, it the, the Borat yeah. rule. The yeah, board. but I mean, yeah. when I'm choosing what I want to wear, I'm doing that with all kinds of confidence. I'm wearing the orange. I'm just going for it, just like you know Josh said. But in Len's job, now you can't fake that. Did it, did OG say it too? People get hurt. We all said it. It's an echo. Yeah. Coming up next, uh, uh, and by the way, is it good etiquette to, to to rip on somebody's clothing while they're live with you in a podcast? I don't I don't know what the etiquette rule is 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 there, but uh, I guess Playful Doug would argue banter. probably probably I not. I believe is the uh, goal here. Coming up next, uh, second half of this conversation. It, we're going to talk about rules of etiquette with your money. What rules of etiquette exist? Uh, our producer, Brooke, the creator of our 201 newsletter, has a bunch of ideas. I know our contributors have ideas, too. What are some of the money etiquette rules that you have? Some that are good. Some maybe we want to throw out. We've got that coming up next. But before that, we got this little trivia competition going on all year long. And this is where, if you're new to the Stacky Benjamin Show, we pit each of these fine three contributors against each other in a fight to the whatever. I don't, I don't know. A fight, to the, a fight to the end of the year. Yes. To, to see who can get the most... <laughs> get the most answers right uh it is a fight for the worst trophy ever oh gee i don't know if you have that that trophy close by so people can see i don't it, but i'm keeping all of the uh i'm keeping all of the um uh, uh hershey kisses that were in it in it because someone will be in for a surprise eventually some year somebody's gonna bite into a hershey kiss and realize that was from like 2019 that's <laughs> not a good hershey kiss so. And the big science experiment goes, it matter. Like we're going to find out whether it does matter if that stuff ages or not. But we've got, uh, we've got a score, which uh, Paula Pant, unfortunately, less and less favors you. I know you weren't here last <sighs> week. Dana sat in for you, but uh, Paula uh, OG got a little bit more caught up. All right. It <laughs> happens. It happens. There's still uh, plenty of many, many months to go before the year is over. The score is Paula five and a half. OG has seven and a half. They tied at one earlier in the year. And then uh, Len leading the charge with nine. So a OG can pull up into maybe a little closer tie or Paula can make it a three horse race again. Let's see. And Doug, you've got today's question. Darn right I do, Joe. Hey there, stackers. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug. As I mentioned at the top of the show, it's Barry Manilow's birthday and yeah, you know, I love Barry Manilow. I can't stop talking about the guy. What? I mean, can a man sing Mandy in the bath after a long, hard day? The man was actually born Barry Allen Pincus. And I'll tell you something you probably don't know. He wrote a ton of great songs. But the one song he didn't actually write was, I write the songs. I mean, here's what didn't sound quite as good. I wrote most of the songs that make the old people sing. It just doesn't have that same kind of, you know. But one of his biggest hits was Copacabana. 
Copacabana is not only a really fun word to say. See, you're saying it right now and you're realizing it's fun. It's also a famous beach in Rio de Janeiro. That's where Manilow got the idea for the title. But the song is really about the famous Copacabana nightclub in New York City. Manilow frequented it in the 60s. But my question is, what year did the nightclub open? I'll be back with the answer after I merengue and do the cha-cha-cha. <laughs> All right. Uh, the Copacabana, the hottest spot north of Havana, Len Penzo. When did the Copacabana open? I'm sure every time you go to New York City, didn't you go to the Copa? I think the Copa is uh, long closed now, isn't it? Anybody know? You got me. I would assume Copa, so. Copa, if it you're is. still open and you want to sponsor the show so people know you're open, <laughs> send an email to joe at stackybenjamins.com. But Len, what year did the Copa Cabana open? I have, again, this is, I don't know. Uh, the, the one in Rio, right? The one in New York City. New York City. New York City. I just, <laughs> are you listening at all? <laughs> New York City. Uh, New York City. Copacabana, my goodness. Hmm. I don't think they had that kind of stuff in the 1800s. You know, that sounds like something that sounds like something that would open up. I shouldn't give this away because I know because then I'm going to I know this is such a good reasoning why you guys are going to you guys are going to both Chelsea Brennan me on either side if I give you the my reasoning. Well, you probably do it now, anyways. What, no matter what my reasoning is, so keep yapping. Yeah, <laughs> I think this. You know, these these clubs came up. I think in the Roaring Twenties. I, I think it just makes total sense that something like this would happen. Come up in the Roaring Twenties. So I'm going to pick right dead center, 1925. 1925. By the way, uh, okay now, IK now. Uh, tells us on YouTube that it's open. I just went in TripAdvisor and it is open. Seriously, uh, so dude. Okay, okay, now I now know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> As in, okay, now I know how to read. <laughs> okay, now apparently I don't know how to read. Wow. Is it good etiquette, Len, to just say you don't know their name? Is that the best, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Is that the right. best etiquette? <laughs> You're having trouble squinting at your laptop. Oh All right. Uh, what year did you say? 1925? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Oh, gee. What do you think about that one? Yeah, I was going down the same path. Roaring 20s. Uh, grandma's birthday year, 1923. 23 undercuts them a little low. So, Paula. All right. I'm Chelsea Brennaning for 1926. I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> And that's the way Len gets the love blanket right between yeah. OG and Paula. Yep. <laughs> nice job. So uh, we were, we would love to tell you who won this thing, but we don't play that way. We will be uh, right back. All right, Len, you kicked it off with 1925. Seemed like a good idea at the time. <laughs> yeah, th th this was a, this is one of those things where you're in first place, you're screwed. So, you know. I might have hit it. Hey, an OG gave me a little bit of an out there for 24, right? We'd split it, right? it, was 24. Yeah, you'd split 24. Thanks, OG, N now knowing that Paula didn't do that and took 26, you're regretting that? Thinking maybe you should have taken 24. <laughs> <laughs> nope, I was just taking, uh, I had in my head, as soon as he asked the question, I thought roaring 20s, and I said, I got to pick a date in the 20s, and the only date that I know that's uh, worth a darn was my grandma's uh, birth year in 1923. So, yep, I and I know you and your... Regardless. You and your grandma got along very well back in the day. And uh, Paula, you feel any remorse by just chopping off Miss your friend, Miss your so-called friend, <laughs> Mr. Penzo at the knees? No, I feel great. I mean, in the question, they said uh, they said that uh, that that dude went to the club in the 1960s, so we know that it was open by then. So 1926 is before 1960. That dude. Yeah. Show the man some respect. I, I forget his Barry name. What's his name? Pinkus, <laughs> AKA Barry Manilow. Barry Manilow. Okay. Barry oh Manilow went there in the 1960s. Paul, you know a lot of Barry Manilow songs? Barry Bar 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 Copacabana? Man no. Nice. <laughs> Bar Barry nice. Manilow didn't write Mandy either, by the way, Doug. Did you know that? No, he didn't. But it was about a dog. Not about a chick, a uh, woman, as everybody thinks. 
Oops. Well, what I think is it's probably well, now time. Well, you just ruined uh, that song for me. I, now that uh, Doug, before Doug Wax is poetic too much about Barry Manilow, <laughs> why, don't we get a, <laughs> why don't we get an answer to this thing so we can move on? Doug, who's right in this one? Hey there, stackers. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug. You know, the Copacabana is an iconic New York nightclub used as a setting in movies like Goodfellas, Raging Bull, and The Irishman. Originally, much like this podcast, it was the shadow business of a mob boss. It went on to host incredible debuts, such as the comedy team of Martin and Lewis, as well as the Supremes. So, when did the Copacabana nightclub open? On November 10th, 1940, which means Paula has Chelsea <laughs> bred in her way right into the winner's circle. Paula Fantastic. makes sure keeps it close, yeah. keeps it close back in the race and the race Titans as we head into the long, hot dog days of you summer. Know, to Congratulations. Be fair, Paula. To be fair. Yeah. Thank Paula, you. you know, she's had a couple cha other chances to Chelsea Brennan and me and she didn't and it cost her. So, so mm. good for you, Paula. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Len, are you telling Paula to be more ruthless? Is that what you're saying? Paula, be more ruthless. No. <laughs> Yeah. No, I'm just, I kind of feel bad for Paula. She was so far behind. So I'm, I'm glad she's coming up there. <laughs> hey, it makes, one the team. makes the competition more interesting. It makes I, it, this is better radio. Plus, if I was going to get any question right, one about a New York City nightclub, that's, that's fitting, you know? <laughs> but you didn't know if it was open or not, though. I have no idea. Okay, no, okay, go. okay now I know. Have you had an egg cream yet? Have you <laughs> had an egg so cream? Weird. No, I still haven't. I've never had egg cream. <laughs> No, allegedly that is an alcoholic beverage. I have never had one though. Have you had one, Len? I think it is. No. <laughs> well, <laughs> have you had twelve? Uh, yeah, that's right. That's what I was gonna say. Paula, just because she doesn't know the name of it, doesn't mean she hasn't been there. She may have. She I may have been there. And just, just, I don't think just, they're just alcoholic. Just no idea. Uh, I don't not think they're alcoholic. At all. They're not even close. Yeah. Like egg no. cream? I've never drank an egg cream, so I don't. I don't actually know. Hey, if you guys don't mind, let's roll into the second half of this. Chocolate syrup, whole milk, Paula. I mean, I know you could pour clear alcohol into damn near anything liquid and be cool with it. Yeah, yeah, Everclear but, and egg cream. But traditionally, an egg cream is not booze. Wait, then why did somebody bring up egg cream when I talked about the Copacabana? I think New Len York. did. Just I did. It's in New York. Maybe Justin from Germany knows. <laughs> All right, uh, on to the second half of this discussion. <laughs> Joe has lost control of the show. We are <laughs> so fun being live, but also just uh, it's like herding goldfish, people. We, we got a great second half. We're going to talk about money and etiquette. And uh, this half of the show is sponsored by Magnify Money. Doug, what happens when you go to magnifymoney.com using our link, stackingbenjamins.com slash magnifymoney? Oh my God, Joe. I don't know. Um, do I finally find an eggshell finish for my bedroom that I've been looking for for years? You may. That would be a nice side hustle for them if if people want that. Plus, all the best things that are not at brick and mortar banks like savings accounts, checking accounts, 92% of all the online banking options available ranked head to head at magnifymoney.com. Go to stackbedjamins.com slash magnify money. Good time to do that, by the way. Interest rates changing very quickly. Time to maybe reassess what you're doing with your online banking. Uh, here in the second half, I want to I want to throw away uh, table etiquette, and I want to talk instead about etiquette with your money. And there are any etiquette rules that you can think of? Uh, Len, let's start with you again. Any etiquette rules with your money? that uh that you can think of which um either is a great rule to remember for people out there listening or a rule that maybe should be thrown away um well etiquette yeah for example um let's say you've got um let's say you've got a party uh that you're at work that that you're going to throw for somebody and you got to get a gift uh it would be kind, it would be wise to consider 
everybody's budget before you know you say hey let's all chip in and let's all chip in say twenty dollars or a hundred dollars or whatever you know or fifty dollars you know you got to pick a number that's equivalent to everybody's income not just like your boss's boss or or you know you've got to control you've got to be considerate of everybody's income before you set that number that they've they've got to chip in for I'm glad that you said that because I remember an early job I had in college and our boss, uh, the general manager of this place I worked, Len, super, super wealthy dude and, and set the bar at like 50 bucks. And I, he wasn't, I mean, he wasn't paying me much over minimum wage and I had to go find a, a gift for somebody I didn't care about that cost 50 bucks. <laughs> and then I remember going to him and he's like, what, you can't afford 50 bucks, can't you? I'm like, you don't pay me anything. Like, you crazy. <laughs> Right. Hey, well, then that's a good opportunity to ask for a raise right there, right? There, there you go. There, there, there's, pay me more. There, there's your let's opening. Let's make it a hundred bucks. There's your opening. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, 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 Paula, etiquette around gifts? Um, I would say, I mean, not, well, not so much around gifts, but around like the, the example was if it's a, a party or a potluck or somebody's birthday, like yeah. if someone invites you over, um, you know, to a house party or something like that, like offer to ask what you can bring, offer to bring a bottle of wine, offer to bring a bag of chips or some pretzel, a bag of, you know, pretzels, something, something that you can contribute um, to the overall gathering. I, I like that. I remember, practice. remember when, uh, when Jeff was here a couple of weeks ago, Jeff was talking about, he's always the uh, paper plates and utensils guy. Like, yeah. because he doesn't cook, but he's like, we always yeah. need something. So show hey, up at the everybody, door. Hey, everybody, I brought something. the napkins. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Is there something though, OG, when you throw a party at your house, you got a cookout at your house or whatever, somebody brings something, you're like, you brought that? Is there something that's unacceptable to bring? Or are you just happy that people chipped in? No, I think that uh, if you're going anywhere to anybody's house, you get you you have to walk in with something, especially if it's some sort of party, you know, even if it wasn't asked for or I mean, frankly, even if they say no, you don't have to bring anything, always bring a bottle of wine or something, you know, um, we tend to I try to make it a point that if you brought something, we're going to use it that day. You know, it's like, oh, you brought a bottle of wine. You must think this is good. Let's crack it open. You brought cookies. All right. We're going to set them out, even if even if we already had dessert planned you know like there's a reason why you brought that stuff maybe you're just trying to get it out of your closet <laughs> you know but, but which is fine but a little you know, gift going on th that's yeah. fine so let's let's get let's get it going you know um i was thinking uh len when you were talking about the gifts you know and being cognizant of everybody else remind me of that movie four christmases i don't know if anybody else has seen that with um uh anyway i can't remember who's vince in it but Vaughn. it's really yeah vince vaughn that's right and um some other people, but, uh, <laughs> but he shows up, he shows up at his like dad's Christmas. And that's obviously the family that's not as well to do. And he gets all his nephews, Xboxes and they're like, Whoa, Oh, this is awesome. And the dad's the dad, who's his brother is like, how'd you fit that in a $10 budget? He's like, $10. I didn't, I didn't Oops. know there was 10 <laughs> hoops. My bad. So, so he like totally stood up, you know, like upstaged his 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 uh, nephew's parents basically at Christmas by going Xboxes all around for everyone, you know. So might pay might pay to read the email ahead of time yeah. But yeah. before you show up. Uh, that's another annoying thing. We we had this go on in our family about like the gift thing. Like we'd all have this like twenty. It's the same deal, like twenty five dollar gift cards, and I'm like, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to give you a $25 gift card so you can turn around and give me a $25 gift card so that I can turn around and give mom a $25 gift card so she can give me a $25 gift card. Let's just get together and just have fun. <laughs> like if, if you if you need a $25 gift card for something, I'll just get that for you. But I don't need one back. Let's not play the shuffle the gift card game. Uh, it's yeah. rather, rather irritating. Why don't we each buy ourselves the gift card we want the most and yes. we'll open it. And we'll all pretend like we're surprised by yeah. the gift we get. Or gave lottery ourselves. tickets. We used to do that where we'd all show up with like, you know, whatever, 20 bucks worth of lottery tickets. And any denomination you wanted to get, it all went in the pot. And then you'd draw them out as, you know, you just go oh. around and you draw it out. Cool. And, you know, sometimes yeah, like that, that sounds one. fun. Sometimes you'd get, you know, you'd be like, all right, I'm taking a $5 one. So pass me for the next five rounds, you know, or whatever. So let's talk about the check at dinner. Uh, uh, Brooke, who writes our 201 has some feelings about uh, restaurants. You're out with a group of people, Len, and uh, and it comes time for the check. Etiquette around the check. And you're on mute. 
His you are still on mute. There we go. And I'm on. I'm sorry. My apologies. Uh, don't you hate it when when uh, you go to the restaurant? There's you're with ten or twelve or fifteen people, a big group, and you have say the salad, and then uh, all people all around you had the filet mignon and the and the uh, the oysters, Rockefeller, and they've they've loaded up on the alcohol, and you're drinking a, a coke, and. Uh, then at the Sounds end, like the guy with the, the guy get party. the one guy gets the gets the check. And he says, "Let's split it down the middle. Let's split it down the middle." You know, you yeah. got to be cognizant of those. It, that really puts the people who have the salad and the coke in a really bad position. You know, makes them look bad if they speak up. You know, so that don't to me, be that's such terrible. a party pooper. Get some red meat, <laughs> exactly. and wine, and oysters well, in exactly. your body every so often for crying out yeah. loud. Yeah, exactly. OG solves, that, your rabbit food. OG solves that very quickly. Stop <laughs> doing that. Jump on Stop board. Doing that. Don't be the wet blanket at dinner. Uh, yeah, we're going to all do the tomahawk ribeyes. What are you going to have, Len? Uh, I'll have the Caesar. Uh, no croutons or dressing, please. So basically just lettuce and uh, ice water. Hold the ice. <laughs> Remind me not to go like, to a, a, a group function with you, OG. No, you want to come with a group functions with me. That's the point. <laughs> It's Why, not so if I'm subsidize your dinner? Yes, I would totally subsidize. <laughs> yeah, that dinner. that that happened, Len. That happened to me uh, last summer, and I learned quickly. But last summer, I went out to dinner with like ten multimillionaires, and I don't mean like multi multi millionaires. And I ordered light because I wasn't sure how we were going to handle the bill. And my like appetizer and and a burger cost me a hundred and sixty five bucks. For an appetizer and a burger. But you got to hang every, out with a whole bunch of cool rich people. Everybody else was ordering just bottles of this and bottles of that. And all this. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I just got forked royally. So That'll yesterday. Huh? Are you telling me they split the tab? These are all oh, multi, multi, and not one of them said, hey, I'll pick did. it up, Joe. They, I'll, they, I'll, they I'll pick it, it up, Doug. Throw them in their cards. So yesterday I'm golfing with three of those guys. I'm like, I'm not making this mistake again. I ordered huge. I went all in with all of the expensive things, and everybody split the bill, and at least I got my money's worth. I wasn't going to get completely scrubbed like I did the first time. I thought that this Fool was going to end differently where they decide at the end to go, all right, everybody throw theirs in. And then whoever the, whoever <laughs> then the, 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 the server will pick out which card yeah. they're going to use. Yeah. 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 Credit card roulette. Yeah. That would be a neighbor Doug story. Wouldn't it? That's a, that's a fun way to play. Paula, <laughs> uh, Paula, anything to add on splitting the check? I got to say credit card roulette is a fun game, but make sure. <laughs> it's that a if scary you are game. Playing, it's a fun game, but I will say make sure that everyone knows the rules ahead of time because it did happen once that my friends and I played a game of credit card roulette and we were with this uh, this new person who had like never hung out with us before and he didn't really understand the rules and then he ended up being the loser and he was a sore loser. It became like a problem. Mm -hmm. So eventually was 72. Eventually somebody like just stepped in and was like, you know what? Screw it. I'll pay. Um, cause this guy was like very upset when he lost. It's like and a then character test out. though. Yeah, exactly. Like, do you want to hang out? Are you, are you the type of person that can like take, take one every so often, you know, for the right. team, you're going to be one of the, one of the, the cool in the cool kids club here. Right. And, exactly. Uh, you know what? And we never lost. invited him to come That's hang right. out again. Loser. Probably yeah. had salad for dinner too. I don't I, no, I think he, he ordered <laughs> about what the rest of us did. He, he didn't pull I a Len. Don't. Yeah. <laughs> Len's like I'm just sitting right here. I'm just sitting here. <laughs> you know what? If you knew me, I would. I'm not the guy who just goes to the restaurant and eats a salad. You know, I'm. I'm. No. I am the yeah. tomahawk steak guy. That's that's definitely. Oh, boy, blue. I'm trying to be. I was trying to be empathetic to the salad eaters yes. out there. What? Salad uh, uh, but Brooke says something on the other side here. She says, don't assume somebody who's flashy with their money is going to pick up the tab whenever you go out. Just because they try to flaunt it doesn't mean they actually have it. If if you know somebody is willing, Paula, to pick up the tab every time you go out, do you, do you let them do it? Good etiquette to say, you know what, let's split this every time? Yeah, I mean, I think if you value the relationship, then you take turns. You know, you're like, hey, you got it last time. Let me pick it up this time. OG's got a big smile on his face. This is just a, such a fun game that I play. <laughs> Cause you can, you can like set this up. The You can set this up on people. They're like now I got it. Now I got it. Now I got it. And then you do the whole, like, you guys want to split this or what? <laughs> just watch this sheer terror. <laughs> it's a long, it's a long con, but 
damn, it's fun. So yeah. wait a minute. You, you pick it up bro. four. You pick it up three times, four times in a row for Steak Brother. Then yeah. you sure you're paying, and you yeah. rip the rug out yeah. from under him. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah. When he's all so in, that's pigging out on so your. That's going to cost you like what two, three grand. Is it worth it? Is the payout the, worth it to watch their face go white? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Judging a book by their cover. I mean, I can't tell you, Paula, how many times I've been in meetings where either somebody thinks that that uh, um, uh, there's a person at the end of the table who's the very important person in the room, and all they want to do is talk to that person, or they think that you're the 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 important person, and really the person sitting next to you might be like this ladder climby thing. Judging the book by its cover can get you into big trouble. Right, right, exactly, exactly. Well, and not just that. I think it uh, it's it's like the character that it reveals underneath. Um, you know, a, a character that's a little bit more transactional than relational. What do you do like, if somebody is if if you've got a friend who is very very um, frugal? And, and I know, and Brooke writes this, she's like, uh, uh, don't judge somebody because they're super frugal. I mean, I have, mm -hmm. I know people where they, where, where you know, you'll, you'll go out with them sometimes and you'll see people call them cheap and you can tell yeah. they get really uncomfortable because, you know, maybe it's not that they're cheap. They just don't value the big expense. I, so I think I have, I have a friend who's like this and I think the biggest uh, distinction is like, so this particular friend, he owns it. Like she is cheap AF and he is proud of it and he owns it and he like advertises it and he lets you know. And so like, so he harbors no illusions, nor does he allow anyone else to harbor illusions. He like completely uh, takes pride in the fact that he is that guy. Um, and so, so it's great hanging out with him because like, you know exactly what you're getting. You know, he's the person who's going to, um, like, you know, uh, walk into a bar with a flask, you know, and order a diet Coke and then like be pouring, pouring from his flask under the table. Like, that's you, you know, be one, he's that guy. That's gotta be one charming MF right there. There's no <laughs> way you want to hang out with that guy unless he has just got the best personality on the planet. Well, it's like, so I, what I respect about him is that he is so unabashedly who he is you know, versus people who are frugal, but then they pretend or cheap, but they, they pretend not to be. And then they kind of like, I don't know, you know, short what well, you're all splitting the bill and they short it by like $5. You know? Are you saying the etiquette Paula here in this case is really on the person who is frugal to know yourself and, and, and lean into it. Yeah. Not, exactly. a, not on their friends. Like don't get mad at your friends that they call you cheap because you're, you're, you're frugal in a situation. Yeah, I'd say if you can't live it down, play it up. Like if that's how you're, if if that's the way that you uh, want to interact with money in the in a social context, then be sure to like let everyone know, and um, you know, and and yes, yeah, lean into it, lean in strong. A lot of talk lately. I want to end on this. A lot of talk lately, Len, on uh, on sharing space, right, and on people having a bit more transparency about what we all make because you're seeing uh, uh, X person making X, somebody else is making Y. Brooke writes here says, you know. Don't go share your salaries, especially when you're drunk. She said she had somebody badgering her who made less money than she made, badger her about how much money she made over and over and over when they were drunk. And she said it just made a made it really uncomfortable. Where do you come down on sharing how much money you make? <clears throat> well, I guess it depends. Um, uh, in a work situation, uh, and there's a big disparity between – um, years on the job between myself and a colleague, I will share information. Um, when it's really close and we're, we're almost peers in terms of, uh, levels or what have you, I'm a little more leery of doing that because it could cause problems depending on who's making a little more, who's making a little less, but, um, but do you think that that like might actually, but do you think that, but, 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 I mean, it seems like there's almost no stakes in sharing it with somebody who's at a different level than you are. And there's very high stakes if you share it with somebody who's close to you, but it could end up making you a lot more money if you find out they're being paid more than you. 
Uh, well, yeah, it could. You, it, it could. It could also get you, in, you know, it could just get you, uh, I don't know, it, it can be bad too. If, if, you have, if you have the reasons for making more than somebody else who's a close peer to you um, and you find out, then by all means, go to the boss and give proof why you're worth you know, you're being underpaid. So, you know, it's, it depends how much, Hey, it's Pandora's box, right? So you gotta yeah. be, if you're going to open Pandora's box, you gotta be willing to, to handle whatever comes out of that box could be good, could be bad. So, so you just gotta be careful with that. Um, for things where like my kids and what have you, I've never been, I've never hidden, you know, my salary or what I earn after I show them, I've showed them, I keep track of, you know, every pay raise I've ever got. I have a complete record from the first day I was hired all the way through, <laughs> all the way through today, you know, and they can see, you know, how, how salaries progressed over time and the years that were lean guy got, got nothing. And, um, you know, just to kind of give them an idea of, you know, you know, when you have to make yeah. a decision to jump. Cause, uh, the, during those lean years, I had to jump companies, you know, to, to make up for, for the lean years. So, I mean, it just to, it's it's good information. It's it's value. It can be it's very valuable. But if you're going to share with people at work, you got to be careful. You got to be really careful. Yeah, I, there's there can be a lot of whiplash in that situation. Oh, gee, you're shaking your head or you're nodding your head rather, like a bobble. little of both, like a bobblehead. <laughs> I had uh, sure. <clears throat> Joe when we were working at American Express. I had a mentor who um, was you know a couple levels above me, and I think this is what Len was getting to. You know, and, and, and earlier in our careers, it was much, much more of a sales organization. And I think you have some, it's a different dynamic if it's that, right? If it's a sales organization, you have some flexibility there to kind of, from a motivation standpoint, like, look, this is what you can do. But I have this very distinct memory of a guy that uh, I worked for where uh, his, his wife would go out of town every so often, and then he'd, he'd get to have the boys over, you know, we'd have bottles of wine and smoke cigars and go to the steakhouse and, you know, do all that stuff. And one time we were at this uh, restaurant and to your point, Len was, you know, probably a bottle and a half of wine into it and had the, you know, the Neptune platter of, you know, seafood tower of stuff, you know, all that stuff. And he reaches into his pocket and he's kind of, you know, a little tipsy and he kind of has this little teeny tiny piece of paper and he starts unfolding it and, and he shows it to the entire table. He goes, look at this. And it was a check for like $27,000. And he goes, I get one of these every month. And he like crumpled it back up and like stuffed it back in his pocket. And he's got his calculator. <laughs> I didn't need to calculate it. I could do the math in my head. But, I, but, but, but the guy, the guy was several levels, you know, above where we were. And he was talking to, to your point, talking to people who were like way, way, way below him and using it much more as a motivation factor, right. you know, like, right. like, and I think that when you're, you know, when you're in the salary world and you're saying like, you know, if you told somebody that makes $50,000 that you made 60,000 and they're at the same level, they might get pretty ticked off about that. Cause that's, that's at $10,000 is like a known quantity. But if you tell somebody who makes $50,000, if you're like, you know, the senior management, you go, I made 500,000, that's like an incomprehensible sub. There's, I mean, you could say 500,000, 500 million. It's just, it doesn't even matter. It's such a big number that there's not, like you said, Joe, not as much risk to, to say that. But I think that you've got to, if you're going to do something like that, you better have a whole story that goes with it, you know, because you can't just, you know, you can't just say like, well, I made $380,000 last year. Speaking of having the story right, I had the story wrong from Brooke. Brooke actually wrote it in the comments that it wasn't a work colleague that she said she agrees that's different. It was a neighbor. And I believe now, Brooke, that you, I mean, how annoying you're at a neighborhood cookout and your neighbor is hammering you for the amount of money you make. <laughs> we had that exact same thing happen. That's what I was. Did you really? I was telling Doug this story before. Um, we were at a dinner for Valentine's Day uh, here locally with a whole bunch of friends. And uh, I had recently had some stuff go on, you know, in my personal life that caused me to write a big check. And, uh, and the, then the wife of the person that I was talking to was kind of like, well, so how much of the check, how much was that check that you wrote? And I'm like, oh, it was, you know, it was a lot of money. And it's, you know, she's like, well, how much was it? And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot, it was a big number, you know, beep, boop, bop, <laughs> you know, leave me alone. You don't want to know. And then finally she goes, no, no, seriously, how much was it? And I go, and I whip the number out and she goes, oh, and her husband looks at her and she, he goes, 
can you be done now? <laughs> you know, like, like it was, it was, it just got to the point where I was like, all right, it just is what it is now. Like uh, it was That's very, a, very, very awkward. You know, I, I would do that to my, if my neighbors asked, I would tell them because I live way below my means. So uh, you know what, maybe they, you know, maybe they'll learn something from it because I'm sure there's, I have neighbors who are, where we're living are we're living way above their means. And if they yeah. have the, the audacity to ask me straight out, I'm going to tell them, you know, yeah. and figure maybe, maybe there's a lesson there for them. I don't know, but yeah, the but, lesson uh, was don't ask dumb questions at dinner when you've had a bottle. This is why everybody <laughs> likes having me as a neighbor because I'm below everybody's means. <laughs> <laughs> I make More mentally and emotionally than anything, yes. but yes, financially I was, you're up there. I think, by the way, that's a great place to leave this uh, discussion on etiquette. Don't be that woman at OG's house. Don't be that guy. <laughs> don't be that the person. moral of that story. Don't that, be that, is, guy. that is the worst. I don't even understand why you would just continue on that path. Yeah, like, I, really? and you could totally read it, too. Like, the whole table was like, eh, ex nay on the <laughs> like, yeah. like, I'm like, oh, it's fine. Well, anyway, so what do you guys think about the Cowboys last year? Like, I was trying to get out of it like a million times. <laughs> yeah. And like, so how I know really, how much was it? It's, it's okay. We're all friends. And I'm like, we're not like this friends. I will tell you. <laughs> you're not going to want to hear this. You're wrong. <laughs> I know. Uh, yes, it was yeah, so ugly. On uh, <laughs> that note, it is it is just I can't imagine being in that in that situation, even hearing her go on and on about that. Hey, uh, time for us to find out what all of you are doing, where you work, and uh, why don't we start with you, Mister OG? Big plans this weekend? I am uh, presently out of town on vacation, celebrating my twentieth anniversary, twenty five years hanging out with the same gal. And uh, 20 years married, and we are in Florida. I thought when he was talking about his 20th, I was like, are you celebrating your 20th birthday for like the 27th time? or 20th anniversary, sir. Thank you yes, much. gotcha. All Quarter right. century. I've snookered her for she's, well over half her life. So someday she's going to catch on. Someday. Someday. <laughs> uh, uh, Len, not too far off, it seems, sometimes. <laughs> Len, how about you? What's going on at lenpenzo.com? Well, uh, now that I'm retired, uh, a whole hey, bunch of- Hey, uh, hold on a oh. second. Hello. What? Right. what? Why not you do this? Today. Oh. Well, <laughs> did you really? <laughs> yeah. As we record this today, you did this? Yes. Hold wow, on. you buried the lead here. Unbelievable. That's it. On Monday. That's it. Damn. Well, I, I couldn't really tie it in with, you know, etiquette. Some, how about, you know, how, about how, to, how to quit your job? <laughs> how to walk in out. and go- Take this job and shove it. <laughs> no, no. So, anyways, I don't know what am I doing. I'm, I'm uh, working on the blog. Uh, let's see what's going on over there. I don't know. Stop on still, by lenpenzo.com. Just slow a lot it. of stupid stuff. You know, I don't look at. It, it's just. It just come on over. Come on over and say hi. I don't know, man. You've had some interesting uh, black coffee discussions lately. <laughs> Uh, which are always a lot of fun at lenpenzo.com. Paula Pant, what's happening at Afford Anything? On the Afford Anything podcast, we have uh, Michael Slepian. He is a professor at Columbia University, and he talks about the secret life of secrets, basically the psychology of secrets. Um, and uh, so it's, it's a fascinating discussion. I, I guess sort of maybe ties in a little bit with etiquette. We tie it a little, a little bit with finance, but uh, yeah, the psychology of secrets um, on the afford anything podcast. The psychology of secrets. Maybe Doug, you need to listen to that one, huh? About keeping a secret. I don't know how to do that. Joe. <laughs> He's got no idea. <laughs> In our family, but we had this thing called uh it was the family. It was the patriarch's family's last name. And that's, and we, it's like the Smith, we'd call it a Smith secret. And it would be like this, the things that'd be like, okay, so nobody knows this, but did you know that Aunt Karen? Da, da, da. It's like, oh yeah, no, I heard that. How did you hear it? It was a secret. Oh, uh, Aunt Donna told me. <laughs> you know, it's like everybody <laughs> knew. And it was like you, and then, and then, you know, it'd be like, okay, now nobody knows, right? Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> we, we called it like this, the Smith family secret or whatever. It was just always like, okay, so here's another one. Did you know about cousin Nate? <laughs> <laughs> and nobody knows that everybody knows everybody knew that everybody knew but everybody, everybody did, pretended yes. to not know so that perfect the illusion is the maintained illusion of secrecy <laughs> yes. 
That's coming up at the Afford Anything podcast where finer podcasts are listened to. Doug, you got it from here, man. What should we have learned today? Well, Joe, first, there are as many unwritten rules to dictate the use of money as there are written ones. Keep learning and refining your habits, you Philistines. Figure it out. Second, if you're looking for the ultimate egg cream recipe, just ask Paula. I mean, that <laughs> woman can work magic with a Capri Sun and some cough syrup. <laughs> <laughs> but the big lesson? I knew we shouldn't have started the show with a mob boss as a backer. I mean, geez, Joe's mom makes Tony Soprano look like Julia Child. I make one late payment. She's got my fingers in a vice and a car battery hooked up to my nipples. <laughs> Thanks to Paula Pant for joining us today. You'll find her podcast, Afford Anything, wherever you're listening to us today. Thanks to Len Penzo for joining us. You can find Len Penzo at lenpenzo.com forward slash blue jeans. Thanks also to OG. Looking for great financial planning help? Call neighbor Doug. Looking for mostly okay financial help? Head to stackingbenjamins.com forward slash OG for his calendar. This show is the property of Stacking Benjamins Podcast. Scratch that. This show is the property of SB Podcast LLC, copyright 2022, and is written in part by Paula Palach, who helps writers power their words, their work, and their earning potential with her Powerhouse Writers Coaching Program. Find out more at powerhousewriters.com. Thanks also to our team who made today possible. Karen Repine is our producer. Tina Eichenberg and Gertrude Smith are our social media mavens. And Brooke Miller handles the show notes and our amazing newsletter, The 201. Not only should you not take advice from anybody you're listening to right now, don't take advice from people you don't know. This show is for entertainment purposes only. Before making any financial decisions, speak with a real financial advisor like me. That's it for today. We'll see you back here on Monday on Stacking Benjamins. Welcome to the after show. This is the part of the show that doesn't exist. You know, I was going to talk about etiquette, but I think that we have to, <laughs> but I think that we have to talk about uh, Len Benzo's retirement, don't we? I think we have to talk about that. Yes, Doug? <laughs> Doug, we were thinking that maybe you'd pontificate about uh, Len's about retirement, retirement and how great it is. Oh, my yes. God, Len, let's hang out. Tell me, it's tell me, Dougie. Awesome sauce. <laughs> Ain't nobody telling you what to do except your wife. It's amazing. You Golfing that, every like other it. day, getting worse at a game you spend so much time thinking about. It's amazing. What could be what could be bad about that? Paula, tips for Len on his uh, new retirement? Uh, ooh. Well, so you'll you'll find that you will be spending a lot of time at home. Um, just by virtue of, you know, not going into an office every day. So develop um, develop some kind of habits that get you routinely out of the house because otherwise inertia can kick in and it's easy to just always be at home. Yeah, that's so, called the bar, Len. <laughs> so, what you, so what do you suggest? Yeah, go, going out. I mean, it could be anything. It could be um, like a favorite walk that you take. Um, or a favorite bike riding trail or, you know, something like that, something that gets you kind of out, even if it's not like your normal workout, even if it's just 20 minutes of like, you take a walk to something, someplace scenic, and then you turn around and double back. Uh, could be a, could be a favorite rave that you go to every <laughs> Thursday night at 3 yes. a.m. Yeah, it could be that, could be that, but better or to get not. out of the house earlier in the day which, so I guess you really have to stay at that rave until sunrise and then you just never make it home. So then you're out in the morning. So then so it the works. Ev 
everybody at 7 a.m. at the Waffle House knows Uncle Len's name. <laughs> As it's, it's IHOP now. IHOP is a place to be. Is it? I don't go to the IHOP because I'm not sure I speak all the languages. So mm. at the International House of Pancakes. Len, are you I, used to go pick up, I used to go pick up donuts, you know, every Saturday morning. And, um, and the same four group of guys would be at that donut shop, old, old guys. And I'm sure they're obviously retired, but they, they obviously they met there every Saturday morning, real early. And just they're sitting there talking, having their coffee, eating their donuts, you know, Is that, I, uh, I, I used to listen to a show Len, on my commute, Johnny in the morning on, on WMVP uh, Chicago. And in the mornings, he, he he would play these bizarre games where people call in, they would trips to, you know, Orlando or wherever. And uh, he played this game called Cop or No Cop for the fifth caller. This woman calls in and she's like, what are the rules? He's like, I can't tell you the rules. You just have to say cop or no cop. And she's like, okay, cop. And then they, you hear the, the phone dial and somebody answers says Southside Dunkin Donuts may I help you and he's like yeah this is Johnny in the morning from WMVP is one of Chicago land's finest there like excuse me is there a police officer at the donut shop yes there is you win <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny is this donut shop I go to it's two doors down is a little mini uh, annex a police annex for the main city it was two doors down from that donut shop you can't make I that bet they, why like do you a, think they put it there Len? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's a city planner earning their paycheck yeah, right there that's amazing yeah oh gee you got uh, some advice for uh uncle len as he retires i do the uh i would say that the biggest thing is you need to make sure that you hang out with people that are substantially younger than you a lot oh because if you end up with if you end up with that group of all the retirees at the donut shop that's when you said that i was like oh my gosh how terrible you're gonna end up you know you'll just be old so, so if you want to, if you want to stay young, you have to hang around young people. So go find something to do that young people do. And I mean, like, you know, you're obviously a svelte man of 47 or 48. So I might look in your like mid thirties, you know, go find, go find like a soccer league to join. That's all back to the rave. Year olds or something. Back to the rave. He's Just, going back to the rave. Why yeah, do you think no, Paul think is there? <laughs> yeah, no, I know. I mean, there's, there is some of that and, and Joe does that magically, you know, he keeps me around just to keep him young because I give him so much crap all the time that <laughs> it's, exactly. it's just like, it's like, it's it like my uh, hair go away is what it what's did. the brain thing that you do to like make your brain strong. Oh, like the brain thing I do around you is whap it on the desk over and over and over. <laughs> I know. That's what I'm saying. Like those, this, like there's just, just such weird synapses that fire in communicating with me that it just, it creates new neuron connections and, uh, uh ne neuroplasticity or something. Isn't that what it's called? The, the concept yeah, yeah, of neuroplasticity, uh, you're building new neural networks. See? That's, that's what I do. That's what I do for all you guys. Mostly he's a, Joe. He's a and network extent, builder. He's a networker. Some, yeah. To some extent, Doug, but, um, but yeah, Paul is right. You have to be able to get out of the house. I go out to lunch almost every day. Not because it's like healthy or inexpensive or whatever. It's because if I don't, I will. I, I've sat in the same chair in this same house for a week straight nonstop and not even thought about going outside. I so by going advice. out to lunch, even yep. just Chick fil A, you know, it just think forces me I love to go. Out. This is the this is the peach shake season, you know, that's oh, Chick fil A. You can't, okay, you got it. Okay. Then number two, then, would be to take care of your body. And uh, <laughs> peach shakes are not on the list. You're Wait allowed a minute. 12, 12 number... grilled nuggets twice. You can have 24 grilled nuggets. That's what you can have every time you go to Chick fil A. That's it. No mac and cheese. And then I think the last rule here is if you're going to get the salad, make sure you're not with other people and split the check. I think that's where we end it. Yes. <laughs>